Did you know that REI Pebble, one of today's leading CRM solutions, tailor-made with land investors in mind, is also a cutting-edge direct mail processing company? In fact, if for some reason using Pebble as a CRM just isn't a good fit for you, maybe due to price, integration limitations, lack of automation features, or whatever it is, there's actually a way to use Pebble exclusively for the purpose of processing direct mail. It's called the Starter Plan, and if I'm honest, I think it's an absolute game changer. For a small monthly subscription fee and a flat 50 cents per unit of mail, on price alone, Pebble is a leading contender. When it comes to the process of uploading a direct mail list and its corresponding letter template or postcard template or what have you, the degree of control and ease of use Pebble offers its users is honestly hard to beat. And I don't say that lightly. I've been actively involved with direct mail marketing in some form or fashion for the better part of a decade, and I've seen a lot of what's out there. As crazy as it sounds, we because let's face it, Pebble's known as a CRM company. At the making of this video, I honestly consider Pebble one of the top direct mail processing solutions available in today's market. Now, that said, of course, there's no such thing as perfect, and using REI Pebble as a direct mail processor definitely has its flaws just like everything else, but all things considered, at this very moment in time, Pebble is one of my favorite solutions when it comes to processing direct mail. I think pretty much every real estate investor who's looking to send out direct mail should give them a serious consideration. They might not be the best fit for every single investor out there, but for most, I think they'll be exactly what you're looking for and then some. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to onboard, set up, and activate a direct mail campaign using Pebble's starter plan. Let's get into it. When you first sign up for REI Pebble's starter plan, there are a few key things that you need to get set up in order to send out mail successfully. Step one, as you can see here, after we see Jesse's welcome video, our first step is to fill out our company name and mailing address. Next, we're prompted to choose between either a blind offer letter template or a neutral letter template. A blind offer direct mail campaign is a strategy where in addition to sending out a letter to prospective sellers, you also include an offer price and a purchase agreement along with it. A neutral letter campaign is just a standalone letter that says you're an investor and you're interested in making them an offer, so you want them to give you a call. Now at this stage, don't get too bogged down choosing between these two templates. It doesn't actually matter that much what you end up choosing for now because beyond blind offer and neutral letter templates, there are a ton of other mail templates that Pebble provides like range letters, postcards, and so on. And even beyond that, you can also create your own custom templates whenever you want. So you're by no means stuck to only choosing between these two templates that you're seeing here permanently. Just for kicks, let's go ahead and proceed with the neutral letter template. The main purpose here is that Pebble is walking you through the process of adjusting at least one of your mail templates with your own personal information. Whether you choose to use this template or any of the others that Pebble provides, prior to initiating a new campaign, you need to make sure that you go through the template you're planning on using and update it to reflect your and your company's unique information. Otherwise, when you activate a campaign, it will send out letters with placeholders and mock data that no one will be able to understand. And you're gonna end up just wasting time and money. You definitely don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now with this neutral letter template that we see here. And here we go. Now that I have a direct mail piece all in order with my own information on it, let's go ahead and click this next button at the bottom here. Then we'll go ahead and click finish and boom. We're onboarded. Welcome to REI Pebble. Before we go ahead and dive into the weeds, let me briefly go over kind of the lay of the land here. On the left, we have six primary sections, the dashboard, campaigns, sellers, buyers, properties, and settings. Under that, we have this website tab, notifications, and at the bottom where you see my name and the grayed out silhouette of what would be a profile picture, if we click on these three vertical dots, we have listed here account, switch teams, which on a starter plan we don't have access to, and the knowledge base, which provides answers to commonly asked questions and provides guidance on common issues and roadblocks. Now, to be clear, the account area listed next to my name is where you edit things like your email, company information, handle billing, and so on. The settings tab that's displayed on the left here is where you access things like your document templates. Obviously, because we're on the starter plan, we're limited to what features we have access to. So a lot of these sections, like automations, for example, will simply prompt us to upgrade our account. Beyond the settings tab, 
Properties is where you access and manage your property records. Whenever you initiate a new direct mail campaign, whether it's Pebble or another direct mail processing company, as a part of the process, you have to provide a CSV file that includes the owner and property information of those that you plan to send mail to. When CSV files are imported, Pebble will automatically create a unique record for every property that's listed within the spreadsheet. And it's under this properties tab here that you can access these unique property specific records. Going back down the page now to notifications, this section is only applicable if you have a team and they at mention you on a particular property or lead record. So for us who are on a starter plan, this section isn't really going to apply. Likewise, the sellers and buyers tab are both tabs that are related to managing buyer and seller leads. But again, just like notifications and the automation section, they're not accessible to those of us who are on the starter plan. Moving on from there, campaigns is probably the most relevant section for our purposes as this is the hub for all things related to direct mail marketing. This is where we upload and manage our lists, start and stop campaigns, decide on our mailing options, like whether or not we want to use standard or first class mail, what letter template we're gonna use, whether we want that letter template to be colorized or black and white, double-sided, and so on. And finally, the dashboard section is a place that will display helpful conversion metrics that Pebble automatically tracks on our behalf, like the total amount of mail we've sent, the response rate, and the purchase rate. Obviously, because we're in a brand new account here, there's no data to display. And I'm assuming that due to the limitations of a starter account, some of the tracking features like conversion rate, for example, may be skewed based on the fact that we have a lack of access to seller records. If we think about it for a moment, how is Pebble going to know how many total leads we get from a particular campaign if there's no record of those seller leads recorded within their database via the seller tab? I don't think that they can. So for those of us who are on a starter plan, I don't think that this dashboard section is gonna be of much use either in addition to the other sections that we've highlighted. Going back to the campaigns tab, the first step for us to get started with a brand new campaign is to click this button right here at the top. In my land business, I use a naming convention that includes the state name and the current month and the current year. So for example, normally I would title this something like Florida, December, 2021 or Colorado, July, 2022, something to that effect. Since the sample list that I've pulled from data tree is all based in Florida, I'll go ahead and stick with that. Next underneath template, I'm going to use the neutral letter that I already updated with my personal information. And then from there, underneath this section called daily sin count, do you see the number 100 here? What this means is that Pebble's default option is to break up the total amount of mail units this particular campaign has into intervals of 100 letters, postcards, or whatever your mail piece happens to be per day. So for example, let's say our campaign has a thousand addresses we need to send a letter to. If you left the number 100 here, Pebble would mail out the total amount of a thousand letters over a 10 day period. A thousand letters total divided by a hundred letters per day equals a 10 day period. If instead you wanted to have all 1000 letters go out all in one drop all at the same time, you'd come here and then you'd simply change this 100 to be equal or greater than the total amount of addresses associated with your particular campaign. So in the case of our example, we would change this from 100 to 1000 or more. To reiterate, if I put the total amount of mail units or greater in this field underneath daily send count, that will prompt Pebble to send out all of my letters at one time and will not break it up over any duration. If the number you put in this field underneath daily send count exceeds the total amount of addresses available for your particular campaign, don't worry. Nothing's gonna break. There's nothing bad that's gonna happen. Pebble will just send out letters to the total amount of addresses that they have on file related to that campaign and nothing more. For our purposes, the example list that I pulled from Data Tree is just shy of 2,000 properties. And I normally send out everything at once. So for me, I'm gonna just bump this up to 2,000. Moving on from there, underneath mail type, this is where I select whether I want standard or first class mail. I'm gonna just stick to standard and then underneath print type, this is where we can select whether we wanna have our mail piece in color or in black and white. For our purposes, I'm gonna keep it black and white. And then under double-sided, 
I'm gonna go ahead and select no, because if you remember, the letter template that we're using in today's video is just a single page neutral letter. With that, let's go ahead and hit save and move on to the next step. Now we're at the stage where we're going to upload our direct mail spreadsheet. As you can see, we have two choices, single county and multi-county. Under the single county tab, we are prompted to select the specific county and state we're mailing to, and then we're prompted to upload our direct mail spreadsheet. Now, when it comes to the multi-county tab, we simply need to upload our spreadsheet. There's no prompt asking us to declare what specific counties we're mailing to. But there is something that you need to be aware of here. In order for the multi-county tab to work, you need to have something called an FIPS code for each and every property that's listed within your spreadsheet. Most data service providers have these FIPS codes widely available. You just have to include it within your data set before you export a list. For example, if we look in DataTree for a moment, once we've gone through and selected the specific criteria and demographics of who we want to mail to, once we go up here and we hit the export button, we're taken to this window where on the left, we have a bunch of information that we can choose to include or not to include within the spreadsheet that we download. From here, we can go to this search bar listed underneath property characteristics export and then type in the letters FIP. And as we can see, the IFPS code displays accordingly. When exporting a direct mail list from DataTree, I'm going to make sure that I've checked this box before exporting my list. Now the example list that we're using in today's video does happen to be multiple county. So let's go ahead and grab that and get it uploaded. By the way, just so you're aware, Pebble will only support lists that are in the CSV format. If you try to import a list that is not a CSV file, Pebble is just simply going to reject it. Now that we've officially went ahead and grabbed our list, let's go ahead and move to the next step by clicking this upload button. Now that we went ahead and uploaded our list successfully, our next step is to sync the data within that list with its corresponding property field within Pebble. That way, once we finalize our list import successfully, all the new property records that Pebble creates will include the relevant data that we want from our spreadsheet and put that data in its correct place so that everything within a property record is organized and easy to navigate. In order for that to happen, we need to match the naming conventions that we see displayed on the left here with the corresponding spreadsheet columns, which we can easily do by clicking on any one of these drop down menus that we see on the right. Each one of these drop down menus contains literally every single column name that's listed within our spreadsheet. For each one of these line items here, we need to go to the drop down, search through it, and select the appropriate column for the corresponding naming convention that's displayed on the left. Now, because DataTree is a popular data service provider among the land investing community, Pebble has provided a way to match the majority of these with just a click of a button. We see Agent Pro 24 7, DataTree, Priced, and PropStream. These are all popular data service providers among the land community, and when you click on one of them, in our case, DataTree, as you can see, everything has been matched up except for owner full name, which we can easily do right now. We're just going to go ahead and click on the drop down menu and scroll down to owner one full name. And there you go. I also want to make a special shout out to what Pebble calls the county code, i.e. the FIPS code that we discussed earlier. Having this code for every single property that's on your list is essential if you want to upload it successfully to Pebble. Now at this stage, we could simply just select this import list button here at the bottom and then proceed to the next step. But I want to highlight something before we move on. Do you see this show custom fields button? Let's go ahead and click on that for a moment. As the words show custom fields suggest, what we're seeing here is a list of property fields that a Pebble user can completely customize and make their own. Underneath the settings tab, we see a small menu bar at the top and lo and behold, this tab called property fields is where you manage and create custom property fields. Each one of these kind of overarching squares essentially serve as kind of a main category. And then all of these subsections are the actual custom property fields that show up when we click on that blue show custom fields link underneath campaigns. Once these property fields are created, they actually show up in a couple of different places within Pebble. The first, obviously, being that section we just discussed on that page where we're matching data between the spreadsheet columns and Pebble. But these property fields also show up within individual property records as well. And they're an extremely practical way 
to keep track of any relevant data that you find useful as you work through buying and selling properties. This top tab is the only one that is not customizable. But starting from due diligence onward, every single one of these tabs is 100% customizable. And if you notice, these tabs and their respective data fields match verbatim the names of the main categories and subsections of what we see displayed on the property field section under the settings tab. Now there's one other place that these custom property fields show up at once they're created. If we go to the document template section and we select a template, we're taken to the document editor within Pebble. This is where we can customize our templates by uploading pictures, bringing in logos, modifying font type and font size. Essentially think of this as Pebble's version of Google Docs or Microsoft Word. As we scroll through the template here, and for that matter, any template that is auto-generated from Pebble, we'll see these little light blue highlighted sections scattered throughout the entire document. These are called placeholders, and they pull data from all property fields within Pebble, both custom and standard. You can add placeholders simply by going to this drop-down menu, appropriately named add placeholder, and then you can scroll through all the available property fields and select the one that meets your needs. Whenever you select on a letter template or even a new document template like a deed or purchase agreement, as long as you access that template through the document section of a specific individual property record, this makes it so that once a document template is properly set up, Pebble users can create documents specific to the subject property that they're working on with just the click of a few buttons. So that's the high level rundown when it comes to property fields. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and click import list. After we select import list, we're taken to a page where we can see the import of each record happen in real time. Once everything is finished importing successfully, if there are any errors that popped up within the spreadsheet, like maybe a particular row didn't have an address or there was missing information related to the property, Pebble will let us know about that in this section at the bottom. Once you've reviewed the errors that have kicked back out of the 1,567 rows, I don't care that two of them are missing addresses, I'm just gonna move forward. So once you're comfortable, we're gonna go ahead and proceed by clicking this view campaign button. Now that we've successfully declared our mailing preferences and instructions, uploaded our direct mail spreadsheet in the form of a CSV file, and matched the essential property fields with their corresponding spreadsheet columns, there's just a few more things for us to do. Within the campaign record itself, we need to go up here to this blue activate campaign button. And then once selected, we're taken to this page where we can review a sample of the letter template we chose after the data listed under a specific property record has merged with the corresponding placeholders. At this stage of the process, I strongly recommend that you do a quick read through of your mail piece just to make sure that there aren't any errors or mistakes. There's nothing worse than having a direct mail campaign fail because of a typo or missing information on your letter. Trust me. If all looks good, we go over here to the left, check the box for verification, and then hit this green activate now button. And there you have it, my friends. Pebble normally gets your first pieces of mail out the door within 24 hours or less. And on standard postage, letters should be hitting mailboxes within about 10 to 14 days. Let's take a moment to congratulate ourselves. We have now gone through the entire process of using Pebble's starter account to send and activate a direct mail campaign. The degree of control that Pebble gives its users in regards to the process of direct mail is truly world-class if you ask me. The fact that I'm not bottlenecked by some representative at a company to successfully execute on their portion of the direct mail process is huge. And on top of that, with Pebble, under most circumstances, it's less than 24 hours from the moment my direct mail list is ready to the point where letters are actually being sent out in the mail. It's honestly hard to beat. This level of simplicity, coupled with its competitive price and all the other benefits we've already mentioned in today's video, Pebble's a pretty strong contender. I think that any real estate investor should heavily consider them as an option when it comes to selecting a direct mail processor. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and with that, I'll catch you next time.